So we're continuing with Hari Bhakti Vilas. Uh, last time we finished the discussion of Shivaratri uh, and the observance of Shivaratri by Vaishnavas. And uh, now we continue on with uh, activities in, in the different months. So the next discussion is the discussion of Govinda Dwadasi. So although we had discussion of uh, of Ekadasi and Dwadasi uh, in chapters 12 and 13. Still here in chapter 14, uh, 14 to 16, we're going to continue talking about monthly duties and, of course, twice a month, the Ekadasi Titi, the Ekadasi Bratam vow comes up. And so there are some uh, other special Ekadasis and Dwadasis which will be discussed. So, Text 2.22 and 2.23. Discussion of Govinda Dwarasi. When the 12th day of the waxing moon in the month of Palguna, <laughs> which is uh, February, March, combines with the Pusha Nakshatra, or star, it is called Govinda Dwarasi because it awards devotional service to Lord Govinda. One should fast that day and worship Lord Govinda with devotion. One should follow the same procedure while observing this vow, as was described in connection with the Papa Nasim Mahadwarasi, so which we discussed the Mahadwarasis uh, in the previous chapter. Text 224, the glories of Govinda Dwarasi. In a conversation between Vashishta and Mandata, that is recorded in the Padma Purana, this verse is found. If the Dwarasi of the waxing moon of the month of Palguna is joined with the Pusha star, it is known as Govinda Dwarasi, which destroys even grave sins. This Pusha star is known for its nourishment. The, the word Pusha, Pushti or Pusha means nourishment. Text 225. One who fasts on that day while observing the prescribed rules and regulations becomes free from all sinful reactions and will not take birth again in this world but attained the rarely achieved perfection of life. Text 226. Govinda Dwarasi is also known as Amalaki Dwarasi. Amalaki is a small Indian gooseberry, which contains a lot of vitamin C, and uh, sometimes is used uh, when people take an oil bath to, or when they clean the body with, with oil, uh, to to clean off the oil because it's very astringent. So if this Dwarasi is not joined with, with the Pusha Nakshatra or, or star, it is called Amalaki Ekadasi. On that day, one should worship the Amalaki tree. Hmm. Text 227, the process of observing Amalaki Ekadasi. In connection with the glories of Papa Nashini Ekadasi, Papa Nashini means the Papa means sin, Nashini means to destroy, the, the ecodicy that destroys sins. Related in the Brahma Purana, this verse is found. O King, while describing the glories of the month of Palguna, it is stated that by observing the sacred vow of Amalaki Ekadasi, one can a, a, attain the abode of Lord Vishnu. Text 228. In a conversation between Devi, and Mahesha, that is between uh, Durga and, and, and Shiva, right? Or we can say Parvati, Shiva and Parvati, right? Found in the Prabhasha Kanda. Prabhasha is a place in, uh, Prabhasha Chetra is the place uh, where the Pandavas, uh, uh, the, uh, the all of the uh, uh, Yadus, you know, uh, fought and killed each other uh, at the end of the Leela of Lord Krishna, Prabhasha Chetra, which is in Gujarat. So Prabhash Kanda is talking about that place. Uh, in that conversation, uh, it says, on the ecodicy of the waxing moon in the month of Palguna, one should observe fasting, bathe in either a river, lake, or pond, or with water from a well, 
and then come before the Amalaki tree if it is possible, if it is available. Text 229 to 230. The Amalaki tree was produced when the demigods and the demons churned the ocean of milk. That is why this tree also became known as Amardaki. Hmm. It is considered to be a form of Durga or Lakshmi and is uh, served by the best of the demigods headed by Brahma. The Amalaki is known as a Vaishnava tree. <laughs> Vaishnava tree, all right. Text 231. After approaching the Amalaki tree, one should worship Lord Hari at the root of the tree with offerings of fresh flowers. Thereafter, one should remain awake throughout the entire night. Text 232 to 234. One should install a pot or a pitcher filled with water at the root of the tree. During the day, one should eat only Havishya rice. Havishya rice, um, I think, was described in the discussion about ecodacy um, and bratas and things like that. It's a type of kitri, Havishya rice. Uh, offer a ghee lamp and then stay awake the entire night while listening to the glories of Lord Hari. By observing this, this vow in this manner, one can become liberated from all kinds of contamination born of Kali Yuga. And after death, one will be welcomed to the abode of Lord Hari. Text 235. Ata Vasantotsuva. Vasantotsuva. So uh, Vasanta is, means spring. There are six uh, seasons in, in, Indi in the Indian calendar. There are six seasons. So there's one called spring. Uh, and uh, uh, so this is the spring festival. Vaishnava should join an assembly of devotees and celebrate the, the festival of Vasanta, which is considered to be de a dear devotee of Lord Krishna. It occurs on the full moon day of the month of Palguna. Full moon day of the month of Palguna is also called Gora Purnima or Holi. Right? So that is the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is also called uh, Vasanta. A festival of the festival of of uh, spring. If one wishes to learn more about how to observe this vow, then he should consult the conversation between the Supreme Lord and Maharaj Yudhisthira that is recorded in the Bhavishyotra Purana. Text two thirty seven, the glories of Vasantotsava, the spring festival. O son of Prita, one who celebrates this festival by following the procedures prescribed in the Shastra. Uh, in the month of Palguna, will have all his desires fulfilled by my mercy. Text 238. When the spring arrives, after a long winter, if one worships the Supreme Lord in the early morning hours by offering him mango flowers mixed with sandalwood paste, uh, on the full moon day, he will experience happiness for 100 years. Text 239. Rituals to be performed in the month of Chaitra. So after Palaguna, we have Chaitra, the, the month of Chaitra. Chaitra is usually the first month of the of the zodiac. Uh, comes in uh, March, April. Uh, one one should observe the vow of Rama Navami. Rama Navami is the appearance day of Lord Rama on the ninth day which occurs during the fortnight of the waxing moon of the month of Chaitra. On Ekadasi, Krishna's Dola Yatra festival, Dola is a swing, swing should be celebrated. And on Dwadasi, one should offer Damanaka flowers to Lord Madan Mohana. So there's three things in one verse here. Ram Navami, um, and Ekadasi, where you observe the swing festival of Lord Krishna, and also the Dwadasi the next day, offer Damanaka flowers to Lord Madan Mohan. Text 240. In the Gautamiya Tantra, it's also stated, in the month of Chaitra, one should worship Lord Vasudeva by offering him all varieties of flowers. So now a discussion of Ramanavami, text 241. In the Augusta Samhita, it is stated, O Brahmana, long ago, the Supreme Lord Ramachandra appeared on the ninth day of the waxing moon in the month of Chaitra. On that day, one should observe fasting and worship Lord Ramachandra. Text 242. This vow is eternal. In the same literature, that is in the Augustus Samhita, Augustus Samhita is, was mentioned previously in connection with uh, 
initiation mantras that have to do with Lord Rama, Rama mantras in the second vilas. Um, o best of the demigods, those who desire liberation from material existence never fail to observe this great vow of Ramanavami. Indeed, it is faithfully observed by Indra, the king of heaven. Text 2, 43. It is also stated, a foolish person who does not observe fasting on Ramanavami will fall down into hell, into the hell known as Kumbhipaka. This is quite a famous hell, actually, this, this one called Kumbhipaka. Um, so I think it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam also, this, this particular hell. Uh, text 244, a foolish person who out of illusion takes food on Ramanavami will fall down and rot in a formidable hell known as Kumbhipaka. Of this there is no doubt. Text 245, the glories of Ramanavami Vrata. In the same literature, again, Augusta Samhita, right, it is stated, the vow of Ramanavami is more important than observing vows on one million solar eclipses. If one does not even, uh, if one does does even a little service with devotion for the pleasure of Lord Ramachandra on that day, he becomes eligible for liberation from material existence. Text 246. It is also stated, one who observes fasting on Ramanavami without remaining idle will never again enter the womb of a mother such a person will soon become a dear devotee of Lord, Ram Lord Ramachandra. Text 247. Therefore, everyone should observe the sacred vow of Ramanavami and in this way become free from all sinful reactions. By doing so, one will ultimately attain the eternal abode of Lord Ramachandra. Text 248. It is also said, simply by observing fasting on Ramanavami, even once in one's life, one's life becomes successful and one is delivered from all sins. The ascertainment of this vow, text 249. Sri Ramachandra is a direct expansion of Lord Hari, and he appeared on the ninth day of the waxing moon of the month of Chaitra. This day is, jo is joined with the Purnavasu nakshatra, and so it fulfills all of one's desires. Text 250. If this particular moment occurs at noon, then it becomes even more auspicious if the if the uh, Purnavasu nakshatra comes in at noon. Text 251. When the sun appeared in the Mesha Rasi, Mesha means Aries, and the, lag, the Lagna was Karka, Karkata, the Supreme Lord Ramachandra um, made his advent from the womb of Kaushalya. He was accompanied by his plenary of portions. Text 252. If Navami is contaminated by the presence of Astami, that is the ninth day is contaminated by the presence of still some of the eighth day, the eighth lunar day, then Vaishnavas should reject it and fast on the next day and then break their fast on the following day. <clears throat> Text 253. Breaking the fast must be done on Dasami in order to ensure that one properly observes the codicy. So very interesting. So we have the Ram Navami, where we fast, and then we have to break the fast again on Dasami. But then again, uh, Ekadasi comes after that, the next day, the 11th day. So um, you have to break fast on Dasami in order to observe the fasting on the Ekadasi after Ram Navami. But Vaishnavas must be sure that on that day, there is no presence of Navami. No presence of Navami on the Dasami when you break the fast before you start the Vrata of Ekadasi. Text 254. Because the elaborate process of observing this Vrata is described in the Augusta Samhita and the Ram, Ramachana Chandrika, so this is also, a, uh, I think Ramachana Chandrika is also a book which is mentioned in the second Vilas in, in, uh, in regards to Rama mantras in initiation. Uh, we have only described it briefly. All right, so we should go to Augustus Samhita and Ramach and Chandrika if we want to know the details about the Ram Navami Vratam. Text 255 to 257, the process of observing the Sri Ram Navami Vrata. One should maintain strict control during the day before Ram Navami, that is the eighth day, right, which falls on the ninth day of the waxing of the waxing moon in the month of Chaitra. On Ram Navami, one should rise early in the morning, brush his teeth, and take a complete bath. 
Thereafter, a householder with a controlled mind should invite a brahmana who is always engaged in the worship of Lord Ramachandra and who is pious and who is free from pride and who, chant, who knows the mantras and processes, processes for worshiping Lord Ramachandra, who chants the holy name of Lord Rama and who is well-versed in the Vedic literature, the householder should duly worship him and pray to him as follows. So it looks like this is a, a prayer that the, that the person, text 258 is a prayer that one should make. So the prayer is, Sri Rama Prati Madanam Karishyeham Vijottama Tatracharyo Bhava Pritaha Sri Rama Vitvam Evacha Vitvam Eva Me. Excuse me. O oh, exalted Brahmana, I wish to give a deity of Lord Ramachandra in charity. May you be pleased with me and act as my acharya, my teacher, uh, because you know the truth about Lord Ramachandra, text 259. At the completion of the worship, one should feed the acharya with palatable food, and he himself should also take some milk while remembering the lotus feet of Lord Ramach Ramachandra. Text 260. The mantra for a single devotee who observes this vow. So here's another mantra. Navam yam angabhutena eka bhaktena ragava ikshvaku vamsatilaka prito bhava bhava priya. O Raghava, O descendant of the Ikshvaku dynasty, O dear Lord of Shiva, Shiva, may you be pleased with this vow that is being observed by me as part of my Ramanava Vibrata. Text 261. On the day of fasting, one should get up early in the morning, take his bath and complete his worship and other rituals before noon. All such activities should be completed as soon as possible. 262, text 262. The mantra for observing the fast. Uposha navami tvadya. Yames vas tvasu ragava. Tena prito bhava tvam baho. Samsara Trahimam Hare. O scion of the Raghu dynasty, I will observe a fast today for a period of eight praharas. So a prahara is three hours. So three times eight is 24 hours for 24 hours. Uh, o Lord Hari, please be merciful to me and deliver me from material existence. Text 263. Thereafter, one should sit in a properly built mandapa and make a resolution uh, to, uh, or sankalpa, to observe this vow strictly in the company of saintly persons. And here's the mantra for taking the vow. Text 264 to 266. Imam Svarnam Mayim Rama Pratimam Suprayat Sri Rama Pritaye Dashye Rama Bhaktya Dimate Prito Rama Harat Vasu, Papani, Subahuni, Me, Aneka, Janma, Samsidani, Abhyastani, Mahanti, Cha. I, will I, I am eager to observe the vow of Ramanavami, and so I will fast for eight praharas or 24 hours. For the pleasure of Lord Ramachandra, I will donate a golden deity of him with great devotion to one of his intelligent devotees. Being pleased by my worship, may Lord Ramachandra quickly remove all the reactions to the grave sinful activities that I had committed in my previous lifetimes. Text 267. This deity of Lord Ramachandra should be made from one pala, not exactly sure what that is, one pala is a, is a, is a, a measurement, right? One pala of gold. If one is unable to afford this, he should use one half pala of gold and even if he's unable to afford this, he can use one fourth pala of gold to make the deity. Text 268. Otherwise, one can make a deity of Lord Ramachandra as he is sitting on the lap of Mother Kosalya using silver. 
the eight kinds of metal, which is called astadatta, like that. In North India, a lot of times they make this astadatta type of deity. It's a type, it's a type of bronze with eight metals. Whereas in South India, usually the deities are made of five metals, panchaloha. Uh, so the eight kinds of metal, stone, wood, or clay, a painting will also suffice. Suffice. So we know that there are different forms of the deity uh, from the Bhagavatam, uh, Lord Krishna's instructions on deity worship in the 11th canto, 27th chapter. He mentions the eight different forms of the deity. One of them is a painting. And so they have metal, stone, wood, clay, different, different forms can be made. Text 269. On the left side of Lord Rama, Lord Rama should be a deity of Sita, being embraced by uh, Lord Rama's left hand. On the right side of Lord Rama should be a, a deity of King Dasarata, his father, carefully observing the face of his son. Text 270. A deity of Lakshmana, along with an umbrella and a chamara, should be placed behind Lord Ramachandra. On both sides, there should be deities of Bharata and Shatrugna. Bharata and Shatrugna are uh, two other brothers of, uh, of, along with Lakshmana, are two other brothers of uh, Lord Ramachandra. So with, fa with, with fans made of palm leaves in their hands, in front of the Lord, there should be a deity of Hanuman, who is always eager to serve the Lord and beg for his mercy. It's interesting. Oh, yes, a deity of Lakshmana. Yeah, along with an umbrella and chamara should be placed behind Lord Ramach Ramachandra. So text 271. Thereafter, one should sit on an asana or a seat, and after performing the required nyasas or or placements of mystical um, mantra syllables on his body, one should first worship the conch shell with sandalwood paste, flowers, and rice paddy. Text 272. One should faithfully sprinkle some water uh, from that conch shell on the water pitcher. So he should have a, a pot, which should be placed on one's left side, as well as on the containers for keeping padya and so on. So we have uh, we have a, a pot. We should perform the, the conch worship, take some water from the conch in the hand and sprinkle it on the rest of the paraphernalia, the 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 pot, the pot containing um, water, and also containers uh, that that uh, include different uh, upachars like padya, agya, achvaniya, shnaniya, shudodika, and also on one's own body with the appropriate mantra, with the appropriate mantra. Om Burba Vasubaha or Mahastraya Pat. This is usually the appropriate mantra for sprinkling water in this situation. Text 272. It is recommended that one chant the famous six-syllable Karaka Brahma mantra, which is considered the king of all mantras relating to Lord Rama. Six-syllable mantra is <clears throat> Om Namo Ramaya. Six syllable of uh, uh, text 274. Uh, on the raised altar for worship, one should draw beautiful and auspicious markings and markings and paintings. It is mentioned that these auspicious paintings should be made on the altar while observing all kinds of bratas. Okay, so here actually. Let's look at the Sanskrit here. Text 274 says, Vilaket. Vilaket means he should draw, right? Sarvato Bhadra. Sarvato Bhadra is a mandala. There's a mandala called Sarvato Bhadra Manda, the all auspicious mandala, right? So it's mentioned here that he should worship, he should install and worship this Sarvato Bhadra Mandala. So it's mentioned twice in the in, in the first line, Sarvato Bhadra. And then in the last line also, Sarvato Bhadra Mandalam. The, the exact procedure for drawing a Sarvato Bhadra Mandala and worshipping different deities on that Sarvato Bhadra Mandala will be given later on in the 19th the last text 905. So uh, we can we can we can check the Digdarshni Tikar of Sanat Goswami for that verse, and we can find the details of the the, the Sarvato Bhadra Mandala. And anybody who wants the details, they can they can get in touch with me because I have all the details of this Sarvato Bhadra Mandala. It's a very common mandala, and uh, it uh, it is used for all auspicious all auspicious occasions. Text uh, two seventy five. 
In the middle of the altar, one should establish a pitcher filled with Ganges water and place five kinds of metal in it. The water pot should be decorated with mango twigs and, and flower garlands and marked <clears throat> with kumkuma. <clears throat> Text 276. The pitcher should either be made of gold, silver, or copper, and it should be covered with a flat wooden board made from wood of the bilba tree. The bilba tree is, <clears throat> the leaves of the bilba tree are like um, used in Shiva, Shiva worship, um, <clears throat> just like Tulsi leaves were used in Vishnu worship. The fruit of the bilba tree is auspicious to Lakshmi, right? Aditya Varni Stapasodi Jato Vanaspatis Tavavikshota Bilvaha in the Sri Suktam, in the uh, Kila or the appendix of the Rig Veda, it's mentioned this uh, this verse that I just chanted, which mentions the 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 bilva tree, is otherwise known as the bale tree. So bale fruit is auspicious to Lakshmi, and the leaves for the worship of Lord Shiva. Uh, so this board must be decorated with with hexagonal drawing, and placed on top of the picture. Then the picture should be covered with two pieces of beautiful fresh cloth. Text 277. An intelligent person should then install an opulent throne on, on the altar. Thereafter, one should worship the altar and throne with offerings of argya and other substances. Text 278. Thereafter, one should bathe the deities with five kinds of substances beginning with milk. Then one should worship the law of the lord by offering him the 16 ingredients 16 ingredients is called 16 services or 16 upacharas sodas upacharas uh, finally the deity should be decorated with very opulent clothing and jewelry text 279 with love and devotion a devotee should apply fragrant sandalwood paste mixed with cool water camphor agaru and kumkum text 280 one should uh one should worship lord ramachandra with, bit, with varieties of fragrant flowers, such as the red lotus, jasmine, jati, kumnaga, and the golden champaka, as well as with many other fragrant, beautiful, and excellent lotus flowers and leaves. Text 281. One should also offer the Lord mango twigs and flowers, dur dur durba grass, which I believe means darba, darba grass or kusha grass, tulsi leaves, Tender bilva leaves. So here, bilva leaves are mentioned as to as being used in the in the worship here on Ram Navami of Lord Ramachandra. That's interesting. And Ashoka flowers. Text 282. The process of worshiping Kosalya and others, that is, other members of Lord Rama's fa uh, family. So Kosalya is his mother, of course. So it looks like this is a mantra here. Ramasya Janani Chasi. Rama Rama Atmakam Idam Jagat At Atastvam Puja Yishyami Puja Yishyami Loka Matarna Mostute. Hmm. Actually, this this is uh this should be broken up differently here. Should be Loka Loka Mata Loka Mata Namostute, right? O oh, Mother of the Universe. You have become the mother of Lord Ramachandra. The whole world is devoted to him. I desire to worship you, and so please accept my humble obeisances. Text 283. Thereafter, one should worship Lord Ramachandra's father, that is Dasarada, by chanting the mantra, Dasarataya Namaha. So this is the word Dasarata in the dative case singular, right? Dasarataya with and Namaha. So usually in Hari Bhakti Vilas, it talks about if you want to worship a personality, uh, use this, the syllable Om and then the, the name of the deity in the dative case and then Namaha. Then one should take permission from Lord Ramachandra and begin to worship his associates. In the six corners of the above mentioned hexagonal drawing, one should perform the six types of nyasa, beginning with the heart. So this is called Anga nyasa. Whether it's two or three uh, eyes, uh, so this this is the anganyasa. So he should perform the anganyasa. This anganyasa is uh, a preliminary here for invoking Lord Ramachandra into the pot or into the deity on top of the pot, which is situated on the Sarito Bhadra Mandala. So text two eighty four. In the eight petals of the lotus-shaped altar, 
One should worship Sugriva, Hanuman, Vibhishana, Bharata, Lakshmana, Angada, Shatrugna, and Jambavan. So these are all the different uh, associates of Lord Ramachandra. And, on, and so uh, when we have a lotus-shaped altar, we have a lotus with eight petals. So on the eight petals, we have these eight personalities We're being worshipped. Sugriva, Hanuman, Vibhishana Bharata, Lakshmana Angada, and Shatrugna and Jambavan. So you notice here that we have basically um, all these people uh, uh, figured in the Ramayana as associates of Lord Ramachandra. Text 285, in the middle of each of the eight petals, one should worship Driti, Jayanta, Vijaya, Surastra, Rastravardhana, Ashoka, Dharmapala, and Sumantra. So these are all um, female deities, looks like female deities, which are also accompanying these other male deities here. Uh, text uh, 286, one must then worship the Lokapalas headed by Indra. Lokapalas also also called Dikpalas or the directional deities, the deities that are in charge of different directions, headed by Indra. Uh, Indra, Agni, Vayu, Kuvera, like this, going around. So in a clockwise fashion. So we're starting with uh, starting with Indra, right? Which means starting in the east. So uh, two two eighty seven two eighty seven. Then one should worship Lord Ramachandra's weapons outside outside the lotus petals. So then there's also these weapons, which also uh, figure in this mystic diagram. That's being um, all of it's being performed on this Savito Bhadra Mandala. So text two eighty eight. Uh, thereafter, one should offer. So the weapons are like we have bow, sword, uh, ankusha, trisul, uh, pasha, noose. Different, different weapons. Thereafter, one should offer incense and a ghee lamp to Lord Ramachandra while ringing a small hand bell, small bell. This should be followed by offering various kinds of palatable food with devotion while observing the prescribed rules and regulations. Text 289. Then one should offer Achamana to the, to the Lord, that is water for washing his mouth, uh, for washing his hands. Achamana to the Lord for washing his hands. That's interesting here. So what it's saying here in the Sanskrit, it actually says Achamana Cha, Achaman Cha. So Achamana and Sutambalam. Tambalam means a pan or sweet spices for the for the mouth, right? Maha Nirajanam means uh, offering arti a bit, with a lamp, right? A great lamp, a great offering of a lamp. And then it says offering uh, Tata Stotrahi and offering, offering namas, namas kuryad, offering obeisances, and offering different prayers, stotras, stutva, right? Okay, so there, thereafter, so one should offer the Lord the finest quality of betel nuts and then perform the grand arti ceremony. Thereafter, one should offer his respectful obeisances to Lord Ramachandra, offer prayers to him, and chant mantras of his in his glorification, text 290. In this way, one should spend the first three hours of Ramanavami by hearing the glories of Lord Ramachandra's appearance and discussing and remembering other transcendental pastimes of Lord Rama in association of his devotees. Text 291. During the first three hours of the day, that is from sunrise, I guess, the sunrise is the beginning of the Vedic day, um, one should without lethargy worship the conch shell the containers for the ingredients of worship, which were mentioned before, Padya Agya Ashramaniya, like this, and the altar. During the second three hours of the day, one should worship the Lord as it was previously described. Thereafter, one should remember the pastime of the Lord's appearance at noon. So the Lord appeared at noon. Text 292. <clears throat> when the five planets were situated in most auspicious positions, then when Brihaspati, the spiritual master of the demigods, was enjoying with Chandra when the day was Navami, when the Lagna was Kar Karkata, when the Nakshatra or star was Puravasu, and the sun was situated in the Mesha or Aries Rasi. Uh, the, uh, the incomparably powerful fire-like personality appeared from the forest of Ayodhya, where Lord Ramachandra appeared, in order to completely burn to ashes the Palasha wood of demons. So this is an analogy made that that uh, lord ramachandra is like the fire and he destroys the the demons which are like palasha wood text 293 
After offering excellent prayers to the Lord, one should play musical instruments for his pleasure. Then one should offer the Lord of the universe fruit, flowers, and argya in a beautiful conch shell. This should be uh, followed by the offering of ashoka flowers, mango flowers, and tulsi leaves. Text 294 to 295. Here's the mantra for offering argya. So, uh, dasanana badartaya dhamma dharma samstapanaya cha uh, dhanavanam vinashaya daityanam nidanaya cha pavitra naya saru nam jato rama svayam hari harihi grihan argyam that should be broken up grihan argyam mayadatam brat brata tri bhi sahito naga <clears throat> lord ramachandra is non different from lord hari and he acted he enacted his appearance pastime in this world for the purpose of killing the ten-headed ravana to re-establish the principles of religion to destroy the dhanavas and daityas and to deliver the saintly devotees O sinless Lord, please accept this argya along with your brothers. Text 296. Without succumbing to lethargy, an intelligent person should repeatedly offer flowers to Lord Ramachandra with lo love and devotion during each and every prahara of the day and night, that is every three hours, while following the prescribed rules and regulations in this regard. In this way, one should spend his day and night. Text 297. The next day, one should rise early in the morning, and after completing his daily duties, he should worship Lord Ramachandra according to the procedures mentioned in Shastra. Thereafter, one should please his spiritual master with service performed with love and devotion, and then honor the Lord's remnants of food in the association of qualified Brahmanas. Finally, he should reward the Brahmanas and with suitable dakshina or a sacrificial fee. So here, here we have the, <clears throat> the mantra for completing the vow. Text 298. Tava prasada svikarat kritam yat paranamaya vratena nena santushtaha svasti bhaktim prayachame. O Lord Ramachandra, I have thus completed my vow by honoring your remnants of food. Please be satisfied by my vow and bestow upon me peace and devotional service at your lotus feet. Text 299. By observing the vow of Ramanavami in this manner, one certainly becomes free from all kinds of sinful reactions, including those resulting from the killing of a Brahmana, and he attains the merit of giving immense wealth in charity. Text 300. Aneka Janma Samsita. Okay, so this is uh, text 300. It is, it is certain that such a person will be freed from all sinful reactions that were accumulated during many, many lifetimes. What, what more can I say? He will surely catch devotional service to, to the Supreme Lord within his grip. Text 301. O great sage, even a detached person who has no material uh, possessions should observe the Rama Navami Vrata by fasting and remaining awake all night as well as by worshipping Lord Ramachandra with love and devotion. Text 302. If the deity of the Lord is made of clay, then one should immerse him in the Ganges. If the deity is in the form of a painting, then one should preserve it at home. And if the deity is made of gold or other metal, then he, then it should, then he should be given to one's spiritual master. So this is the, um, this is the process of visarjanam or bidding farewell or valediction. Of the deity, especially if we have a uh, a temporary deity made of clay, we have to immerse that in in, in water like that. After we do that, uh, the the uh, the valediction or the dismissal of the deity, we say, Sri <clears throat> Ramachandraya Namaha Sobhanatikshemaya Purnagamanaya Cha, and we and we bid him farewell. Om Namo Narayana 